Once saved, always save. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about why this is a dangerous doctrine. Welcome to my channel. Hi, my name is Pooh Grunfelder. Um, let's go ahead and talk about it. I've been trying to get this message out, get this teaching out for ugh, weeks. So I know that this is meant to go out into the atmosphere and I just keep getting blocked. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about why it's dangerous and why we really do need to talk about it. Why, why it is a salvation issue. I usually won't get on here and banter back and forth with anybody okay about scripture um unless it is a salvation issue or in case it's just like something that just needs to be addressed but if it's it's not a salvation issue i could care less like if it's not going to stop you from you know going to heaven then why are we debating we can agree to disagree but this is one of those times this is one of those topics this is one of those issues where it is definitely a salvation issue. Okay, once saved, always saved. Is it a biblical concept? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So let's talk about what the actual belief is that I feel like is a dangerous doctrine. So people that believe in once saved, always saved, for the most part, okay, huge consensus, if you will, believe that once you become a Christian, once you become saved, once you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that he is the Son of God, that he did come down as a man, that he did die on the cross for you and your sins. Once you believe all of that, you profess that, that you are saved, okay? And that's absolutely true. Okay, no, I'm not disagreeing with that. But here's where I disagree. They believe in all of that with the caveat that you cannot lose your salvation. Is that true? Okay. Eh. Eh. Depending on how you spin that word. Can you lose your salvation? Does God take your salvation away? Like, does he say, swiper, no swiping, yeet, just playing? No, no. Um, is it something that you can earn? No, absolutely not. It was a gift, okay? He gave his blood as a sacrifice for our sins, okay? And by our, I don't just mean me and you. By our, I don't just mean uh, the body of Christ or, you know, Christians. I mean everybody. Okay, he said, anyone that will follow me, okay, and by follow me, that means obedience, but we'll get into all of that. But basically, you have this belief, you will follow me, etc., then, you know, my grace is sufficient, okay? It covers you. It covers everyone, anyone. So, it's not something that you can earn, absolutely not. It's not something you can work for, okay? However... It is something that you do have to work for, okay, in order to keep. Okay, I know what you're saying. Oh, you're so confusing. You're so confusing. So let's go ahead and let's just walk it out. And then I'll get to what, what I'll explain, okay? So once saved, always saved. I told you what the belief was once you become a Christian your salvation, you can never, ever, ever, no matter what you do, no matter what you do, not what God does, no matter what you do, you cannot lose your salvation. Okay. And to point out, I'm going to go scriptural. We always got to pull scripture and see where is this coming from? Because nine chances out of 10, it does, uh, beliefs like this don't come out of thin air. I mean, if they did, you could, you know, obviously see that it's wrong but you know what satan likes to do he likes to mix a little bit of truth with a whole bunch of lies so let's go to it and let's see where the confusion is coming in if it's confusion then it's something that you are misinterpreting and that you don't understand because god is not the author of confusion okay but let's go ahead and let's dig into it so john three fifteen, 
okay? That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life, okay? That's where the foundation of this belief comes from, okay? Is John 3, 15, okay? And to compound on top of that, you'll always hear once saved, always saved. There's absolutely nothing you can do to lose your salvation. People will also cite 316, but I will implore you all to please not just read 315, not just read John 316, but let's go ahead and just read the whole chapter, okay? Read the whole third chapter and then come to an understanding from there. Let's not just take things out of context, okay? But let's go ahead and see what three, John 3, 16 is. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. They're really harping on the, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life, okay? Is that a lie? No, God said it. It's a fact, but... There's more to it than just that, which is why it's so important to read the whole chapter, okay, to get a full synopsis of what's going on. But let's go ahead. Let's walk this out. Let's see where, you know, this is coming from. There's more. So outside of 316, John 524, that's all, that's a belief as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. So they're taking this part right here. Let's go ahead and just dive into it. And shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. So they're saying, no matter what you do, you're not going to be judged for it because God died for your sins and you believed and you said it, you professed it with your lips. We'll get to that later, okay? And it is so, okay? And I'm saying, again, there's more to that. I mean, a lot of this really, really, really requires some common sense and, of course, some uh, studying to show thyself approved, most definitely, okay? But they also go for this. Let's go look at into Romans, okay? Romans 8, 38 through 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay. People who believe this very dangerous doctrine, depending on how you lean, will definitely cite this. Okay. That's saying, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, death itself, angels, you know, principalities, powers, things present to come, you know, none of that. Absolutely, none of that can separate you from your salvation. Is that true? Yes, but there is a but. There's a but. There's a however and there. There is all of that, but we'll get to it, okay? Another one is Romans 3, 22 uh, through 26. So let's go ahead and dig into this. And again, I will implore you. Do not take my word for it. Do not take the, the scriptures that I put on screen, by the way, are either going to be coming from ESV, CSV, or King James Version, okay? But whatever version you have, okay, God will make it plain for you. The Holy Spirit will make it plain for you. So don't feel like you got to have a certain language. You know, I know there's a lot of Bible thumpers that say King James Version only. God speaks to everyone. He speaks your language, okay? So don't be ashamed of whatever you know, interpretation or, you know, whatever you have. You have CSV, ESV, you know, A, whatever. It doesn't matter, okay? A, B, C, D, M, G. <laughs> it, God will speak to you. He will make it plain. And you can always, always cross-reference. If you don't have all of the different Bibles, then you can go to, um, um, let's see. I think there's a blue Bible. There's definitely that. And you can go to Bible Gateway. Uh, 
I know that uh, there's one, uh, the Holy Bible, they have different apps and stuff that you can use on your phone as well. Where you can just quickly jump from, you know, whatever version speaks to you, whichever version you can understand, or if one word or one phrase just doesn't make sense. But anyways, I digress. We can go all day. I can talk all day. So let me get back on topic. Romans 3, 22 and 26. But now the righteousness of God has, I'm sorry. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. There is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift. Through the redemption that is in Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. So let's go ahead and let's cherry pick this down. Let's zoom back in and see what, what the, where the basis of the argument comes from. Okay, so they're saying that they are justified by his grace. Facts, facts, okay? That it, his grace is a gift. Facts, facts, okay? God doesn't lie. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with any of this, but when taken out of context, that's where you get into trouble, Okay. So they're saying by his blood received in faith, okay, he has a divine forbearance that passed over former sins, okay? The key word that is glossed over here is former sins, not all sins, not coming to be sins, not after you have repented and you just keep, keep getting to do what you want to do. No, 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 no. Once you come to him, okay, it's past, it's former sins okay but this is the basis of where that comes from you really pay attention really look at the words i'm not taking anything away from this and i'm not adding anything to it okay so and that's what happens a lot like right here they'll say you know he died for our sins and it doesn't matter blah blah, blah. no clearly says clearly former sins past sins but we'll continue we'll continue Let's also go to Romans 10, 9 through 10. Okay, Romans 10, 9 through 10. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is the principle of the argument right here, okay? For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Is this true? Of course it's true. God said it. Okay? And God is not a liar. Okay? Satan is the father of lies, not God. But in however, we'll get to the button however. Okay? This is why it's important not to take things out of context and to read the whole chapter read the whole book read the entire bible and most definitely never ever ever not even me take anyone else's word for it please study to show thyself approved and if you don't understand it seek god he loves that he wants that relationship okay and he will make it plain he will dumb it down Trust me, if I can understand it, anybody can understand it, okay? Anybody. He will break it down to you. He will send the Holy Spirit. He will break it down into a language that you understand, okay? So let's go to why this is a, dang a dangerous doctrine, okay? Let's talk about that. Why once saved, always saved can be absolutely dangerous. First, let's go into John, and let's go to John 8.11, no one, Lord, she answered. Neither do I condemn you, said Jesus. Go, and from now on, 
do not sin anymore. Now, did I just like swipe that out of a out of a chapter? Yes. If you don't know what's going on here, does that make sense? No. But does it prove the point that I said, uh, go and sin no more? Absolutely. But I'm going to give you the background and I'm going to implore you to go and read that entire chapter. Okay. John chapter eight, but I will break down what's going on here. So this is where, uh, Jesus was walking and came along a group where this woman was about to be stoned to death for committing adultery. Okay. And this is where he went around and, you know, they were like, what do we do? You know, throw the stone. We're going to kill her. You know, what do you say? Jesus character, you know, they didn't say that, but I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. Uh, and he basically said, well, he who has, you know, committed no sin, you cast the first stone. Everybody has sinned. So obviously no one could throw that stone at her. So once they walked away, this then comes into that conversation that they had. And he was like, you know, I can't condemn you, you know, so you are forgiven. But the key phrasing here is, let's go back to it. Go from now on and do not sin anymore. Okay. Once you are forgiven, once, you know, he says, okay, it's okay, my child, I forgive you. You know, I extend that grace to you, but don't go do it again. Okay. Don't go sin anymore. And if you're in confusion, and this is to you, to anyone that is listening to this, if you are in confusion about what a sin is, I implore you to just go check out the Ten Commandments and start there. Okay? Check out the Ten Commandments. They're still very valid. If you don't believe me, go back and check my previous video. I'll link it here. Okay? But go and sin no more. Okay? So if you're forgiven, you can't go and continue doing what you were doing before you asked for forgiveness. That, that's very plain here. But let's walk it out. Let's keep going. Hebrews. 10 26 through 27 for if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries come on child what does that mean I didn't add anything to that or take anything away. It was very, very plain that you cannot continue in sin, even though, okay, even though Jesus died for your sins, okay? Does that mean that you can't go and repent, you know, after you commit a sin? Yes, but it says right here, let's go back to it, let's go back to it, come on, come on. For if we go on sinning, deliberately come on let's go back okay come back deliberately that means you purposefully repented right you were sorrowful you repented god forgave you but then you deliberately said i'm gonna go back and do it again i like that saying it felt good it felt good to my flesh okay no clearly let's go back let's go back for if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Okay, let's come back. Let's come back. Okay, so that seems to clear it up right here for me. Okay, did Jesus die for my sins? Absolutely. Is it something that I can work myself up to, you know, to be worthy of it? No, I'll never be worthy of it. Okay. That's why it's a gift. That's why he gave it. Okay. But once I say, Lord, forgive me. Okay. I was wrong. Then I have to no longer continue in that sin. If you're confused, look up what repent means. Okay, look at what repent means. And it means to turn away, to do no longer. Okay, so if you're once saved, always saved, but you can go back to doing what it was that you were doing before you professed all of that. 
then that's an oxymoron, okay? No. Let's continue though. There's more, there's more to, to, to showing why this is dangerous, okay? And I'm not trying to bash you. I'm trying to help you. Like, I genuinely love my brothers and sisters, okay? And the sad part is, is that this is not even an argument that a non-believer or a sinner would even have. This is within the body of Christ, okay? It's within the body of Christ. I'm sitting here looking at my brothers and sisters go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. For what? When it's right here. And this is, like I said at the very beginning, this is a salvation issue. So I do get a little lot fired up. Okay. A little lot because I, I want everybody to be in heaven. I want to bug every single one of y'all in heaven. I want to go to your little room, your little house. I want to go to all of that. Okay. And bug you. <laughs> I don't want to know that you're not there or not know that you're not there and just somewhere in the you know universe you're not there okay that's a whole nother topic we won't get into that but i'm just saying i want you all to be there i want us all to kick it i want us all at the wedding scepter the, the wedding reception okay i want us all with our little plates and drinks and stuff i want us to have a darn good time and i would feel really bad if i knew something and i didn't try to help my brothers and sisters okay and God has put it heavy on my heart, so I, I know that this is supposed to be done. And I can't make you believe it, okay? And I'm not going to sit here and go, like I said, I'm not going to just argue with you, but I'm going to point out facts. I'm going to give you the information, and I'm just going to pray that you pray, okay? And that you'll see, you know, it is what it is. But let's continue, okay? So if I get a little passionate, I'm not angry. It's just I'm passionate, baby. I want us all to make it, Okay? So let's go ahead and let's go to 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor the drunkards, nor the revelers, nor the swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Very plain here on what type of sin and what sins will not inherit the kingdom of God. But let's go ahead. Come on, come back, come back. Let's go ahead and say it for the people in the middle and the back. Okay, if you're not in the front, let's say it for the people in the back. Let's get a little bit louder. Okay. And let's go ahead and give my King James Version people a shout out because they'll say that this was a foo-foo version and it wasn't da 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 Okay, so let's go ahead and get the front, the middle, and the back. Let's go. Come on. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. Or do you not know? I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Come on and come back. I know I called out somebody soon. Okay. In one of those versions, I know I called out somebody's sin. Even if it's not a current sin, it was a previous one. Okay? And that's not something that you can continue in after you, you know, believe in Jesus. Okay? And say, yes, I believe in you. I appreciate what you did for me. I know that it's a gift. I know that it's nothing that I could ever work myself up to ever in life could I ever work myself up to being worthy enough okay you you here, let me break it down a different way let me break it down this way let's humanize this so let's say you have a kid okay from my parents out there you have a child that has stolen from you Okay, stolen whatever, doesn't matter what it is, put stolen blank from you, okay? 
but they came back and they were so sorry. They were apologetic. They came with the tears, the emotions and all of that. And you believe them and they believe themselves in that moment. Okay. All right. And then you said, I forgive you, you know, water under the bridge, as we like to say in the South, water under the bridge, you know, let's not, let's not worry about it. We're going to move forward from here. Okay. But then the very next week, that same child comes and steals money out of your purse. That was for your rent or mortgage. And then steals money out of your bank account. That was for, you know, some very important bills that had to be paid on time or you lose them. Okay. You're not going to feel the same way. Okay. You're going to be like, wait a minute. You was playing with me. You was playing with me. You lied to me. When I said I forgave you, that didn't mean go back and do the same thing. You know, mommy is not for play play. Dad is not for play play. Okay, I'm, I'm getting ready to call the police. Hello, police, police. Come and get this child because obviously they don't understand. Okay? It's no different than Jesus. I don't know why y'all be playing with him like that. Like, he's not for play play. You can't sit here and be like, oh, Lord, you know, please forgive me for... Fill in your sin here. Fill in the blank. Please forgive me for blank. And then five minutes later, go and do the same thing. Deliberately. Okay? Continuously. Habitually. No. It's not the way this works. Not even... If it doesn't work... For, okay. If it doesn't work that way for you, if someone can't keep slighting you, keep saying something and doing something else okay and you're like you know a lot of people love to say this one don't play with me play with god <laughs> okay don't try me try god if they if you don't want them to try you and you are made in god's image if you ain't putting up with the shenanigans then what in the world makes you think that god is gonna put up with the shenanigans and the buffoonery and you remain in his image. You are a carbon copy of him. Hmm? What? Now, if you like your father, if you get his traits, okay, then no, even the more. Shoot, you a duplicate, okay? You know, the more it's duplicated, you know, you get the multiplicity thing. But so think about the original. The original, if, if you ain't playing that, the original is definitely not playing that. Okay, so let's go. Let's go to Galatians. Come on, let's go. And it's Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enemy, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, Come on now, I know that I'm naming somebody's sin. Let's go back. Okay? Envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Come on back, come on back. Now, <laughs> if all of this is true, then how in the world can... You do something, be forgiven, and then continue to do it and always be saved. What point am I trying to make here? The point that I'm trying to make is God does not take his salvation from you. He clearly says that. It's, it was a gift. Okay? It is a gift. It's still very, very prevalent. Small window people. Okay? When he's just going to just stop listening because he's been trying. And you guys are not listening. You guys are not getting the message, okay? And I'm giving you a message again, okay? I'm saying it for the front, the middle, and the back, okay? It's a free gift, okay? But you make the personal choice to disinherit yourself with your actions. Think about that. Let that sink in. Okay, what is another way that I can say this? 
to make you understand. I'm a mom, so I'm always gonna gravitate towards kids. As we go, I'll try to get a little better for my little young babies. Because this is really, I really want my babies to understand. Don't be dismayed by these old people. And I don't mean old people by age. I mean people that say that they are more longer, long tooth, as we say in the South. Long tooth in the faith and know, say that they know more than you and call you a babe. And expect for you to just listen to them. Please don't. Please get your Bible. Please read. God will help you. I, I'm, I'm talking to you. Okay. I'm talking to you to go to these little foo-foo churches and they tell you, say the sinner's prayer and you're fine. And then you go back out to doing what you were doing and you think you're good. And then boom, something happens. And then you somewhere you don't want to be and you can't change it. And oh my God, is that so sad? Okay. Like I said, I, I want to bug all y'all in heaven. Okay. Whether you like me or not. I could care less. <laughs> I want you up there, okay? I don't want my enemies in hell. Mm -mm. Except for um, the demonic ones. Y'all need to be there. Except for Satan. Yeah, y'all need to be there. Because y'all just lying to a whole bunch of innocent people. Taking them down the wrong path. But I digress. Um, example. Let's say that you tell your child, I am going to pay for your college degree okay I have set aside 250,000 and that seems like it's not a lot okay for the Ivy League schools and all this stuff or to be a doctor I have set aside $750,000 and if we are in a time where that seems like it's not enough money I have set aside 1.5 million dollars for your education okay so we should be covered all the way around no matter where you go to okay or what time frame we're in I'm setting this aside for you and there's nothing you can do to work for it, okay? There's nothing you can do. I'm giving this to you, okay? It's not that you were a great kid. <laughs> it's not that you aren't a stinker, okay? It's not that you made the most fantastic grades. It's not that I've seen all of this potential of you being a doctor, lawyer, judge, uh, firefighter, nurse, teacher, uh, manager, fashion designer. It's not that I've seen any of these things on you. It's my gift to you. And it will always be there. Okay. It will always be there. This money will always be set aside for you. No matter what, it's there. You just got to claim it. Keywords. You just got to claim it. So what do you think is going to happen if your child, knowing this, flunks every class or barely passes okay barely no let's go with flunk let's use that example first they flunk every class and they don't graduate but expect that money you're not taking the money away the decision they made to not at least make bare minimum grades to pass high school is what is preventing them from getting that 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 college money not, nothing that you did, okay? It's, it was their action and choices. So let's go a little further. Let's say that they made decent grades, okay? And they were not bad, you know, students overall, just kids being kids. But they didn't do any preparation. They wait until they're walking across the stage with their cap and gown to say, hey, okay, I'm going to college and I want my money now. <laughs> J G Wentworth 877 cash now. I want my money now. Okay. And you're like, you can't have it now. Not because I'm saying that is I'm not giving it to you, but you didn't make the preparation. You didn't take the ACT or the SAT and you didn't pass it. Okay. You haven't applied for any college and got accepted. You can't get that money. Not because of something that I did, but because of your choices and your actions. Say that your um, child just just really does wrong, just really does really bad, okay? And they end up in prison with several felonies and they will uh, not get out of prison 
in their lifetime. And for whatever reason, I'm just saying that it's not true, okay? I know that they can, but let's just say for this example that they can. not That whatever they did was so bad that they cannot get an accredited college education while in prison. Is that something that you did to take the money away? No, it was their actions and their choices. I say all of that to say, hoping that I am resonating with someone is that you can't, you know, just get something without putting some effort into it, without putting some work into it, into following rules and being obedient. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get back into it because I got more to say. Okay, on that one, I want to go ahead and say it for the people in the back too, on Galatians 5, 19 and 21, King James Version, uh, people, I'm going to give you a shout out and go ahead and say it in that version as well. Because like I said, I want you to understand that every sin that there is, is called out. Okay, so let's go ahead and see that one. Galatians 5, 19 through 21, King James Version. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedations, heresies, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have told you in past time, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Let's go ahead and come back. You can't live in that sin. You can't deliberately ask for forgiveness and, you know, really mean it, but then really mean to go back and doing what you was doing. You know, being of your, you know, father Satan, doing his doings. You can't serve two masters. You can't serve Satan and God. Come on, this, I would think that this would be a no brainer, but somehow Satan has gone ahead and creeped in on this, on this whole doctrine and just made a whole lie and get people to argue and want to fight. And it's, it's no, it's no, we're not doing that. Let's clear it up. Let's keep going. John, let's go to first John three and four. Okay. Everyone who commits sin practices lawlessness and sin is lawlessness. Okay, come on back. We cannot continue in sin, basically. Let's move on. Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I shouldn't have to explain that one, people. Okay, you sin, you're going to go to hell. You sin, sin cannot enter heaven. It's, it's clear as day right here, okay? But the gift of life is through Jesus Christ, okay? But you have to be obedient. You have to listen, you know, to his rules. His, you got to pick up your cross daily. But let's go ahead and let's go to Joshua 24 and 15. If it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the God's your father served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come on back. This is a staple in my house. This is, this is above uh, my door. Okay. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We, we, we're not choosing between, we're not straddling the fence. Okay. I'm not going to go and live like the world Monday through Saturday and then try to come and get right with God on Sunday and then rinse, repeat Monday through Saturday and act like that it's okay. Treat God the way you want to be treated. And I don't know anybody that deliberately wants to be treated bad. Okay? Treat God like the friend that you want or that you try to be if you're a good friend. Okay, everybody wants a good friend, someone they can depend on. Treat treat God the same way. You don't want someone lying to you saying that they're not going to do something and then go back and do it. You don't want someone that gives you lip service. Please forgive me, I'm so sorry. But then they go with their actions and do something completely different. Let's go ahead and talk about relationships and let's break it down that way. Let's say that you're in a relationship with fill in the blank there, okay? 
and they do something to offend you put the offense here it could be they hit you it could be they steal from you it could be they cheat on you it could be whatever fill in blank here they did this to hurt me okay they did blank to hurt me and they come to you and they say i'm so sorry i'll never do it again please forgive me okay this was a mishap this was a mistake i was drunk i was this i was that whatever and you forgive them but then they do it again and again and again but they still profess with their lips but their actions they keep doing it again and doing it again and doing it again and doing it again some of y'all be doing them you know be accepting these agains and agains and agains and agains and again that's way more than what you should okay are we supposed to forgive yes are you supposed to sit there and be abused Okay. Put your thinking cap on for that one. But I'm just saying, but don't, 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 y'all just be doing God dirty and acting like it's okay. It's not. Well, let's continue. Galatians 6, 7, and 8. And this is important. Okay. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a person sows, he will also reap. Because the one who sows to his flesh will reap destruction from the flesh. But the one who sows to the spirit will reap eternal life from the spirit. Come on back. This is what I've been saying. Okay? It's right there, biblically. I'm just breaking it down to you the best way I know how. I hope that it's making sense. I pray that it's resonating with you. And if you got mad, good. That means I'm aggravating somebody's demons. Okay? And I'm happy. God bless you. Read. Pray. Ask for understanding. Okay? Because I want to see you in heaven. Okay? I want you to see me too. So pray for me. Okay? If not perfect. Please pray for me. Yeah, all the prayers. Let's continue. Deuteronomy 30 and 19. I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today that I have set before you life and death. Okay, come on back. That's a choice. You can choose life or death. You can choose God or you can choose Satan. You can choose obedience. You can choose disobedience. Okay, let's go back. I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Let's go ahead and let's go to 2 Peter 3 and 17. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of lawless and fall from your secure position. Come on back. Secure. Okay, that gift is secure. All you have to do is stand in position. And how do you stand in position? Try your very best to be sinless. Be deliberate and not trying to sin, okay? Instead of deliberately trying to live your life the way you want to live and YOLO in it, please don't YOLO it. <laughs> and YOLO, you only live once. Yes, you only live once, but that don't mean live careless. Don't daredevil it, okay? Please don't. Please don't, okay? Basically, you have a choice, okay? And you have a secure position. God has set you up for success. The only person that can drag you down is you, honey, okay? And you're secure as long as you follow those 10 commandments. You're secure as long as you pick up your cross daily and follow Jesus. Are you gonna get it right every single time, every single second? No, you're not perfect. The only person that was perfect wasn't even a person, it was Jesus, okay? But strive for perfection, okay? Examine yourself daily. Repent daily and do not deliberately rinse and repeat sin, okay? That's where once saved, always saved is so, 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 so wrong. So, 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 so dangerous, okay? Let's not do that. Let's be smarter. Let's be smarter. We're called to be smarter. And above all else, let's go ahead and let's talk about this. I got just a little bit more. 
I'm hoping I'm making my point. I'm not trying to be too long-winded because, honey, I can talk about this forever. <laughs> but let's go ahead. Biggest thing, quid pro quo. It means, and it's a Latin word, and it means something for something, okay? Quid pro quo, something for something. And that's basically what our salvation that was given to us as a gift by Jesus Christ is. I'm giving my life for you. I'm giving my blood for you in return for your obedience. Okay? I'm extending to you salvation. I am putting you in a secure position in return for you picking up your cross daily and following me in return for you following my as i like to call it life book okay in return for following my word okay the bible okay i'm giving you salvation in return i expect for you to share the gospel in return i expect for you to be righteous and holy in return i expect for you to be you know blameless okay it's a quid pro quo whether you like to think of it that way or not but it really is it's nothing that you wouldn't expect as a good parent I'm sorry i'm a parent i gotta blame my mom as a good parent that you wouldn't expect for your, your kids it's it's no different it's no harder okay it's just that you have the power of choice and not always is god going to step in and stop you okay once you start making a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of wrong choices, okay, a lot of bad ones, and you just get real hardened in the heart, he, at some point, he's going to take his hands off of you, and you don't want that, okay? So, let's continue. James 2 and 26, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so also is faith without works dead. Come on back. I think I've been saying this. I think I just got too excited that I've been saying this all along, but I want to give you scripture to back it up, okay? Faith without works is dead, okay? Salvation without you working daily, okay? Towards the laws of Jesus Christ, towards the laws of God, towards being sinless, that don't work. You can't give lip service. A lot of people will say, and I will, I, I'm one of those, a lot of people, me, I'm her, she is me, hello, Okay? I would rather you zip this and not say anything and show me, okay? Don't tell me you love me. Show me. Show me you love me. Don't tell me you're going to take the trash out. Do it, okay? I like action, baby, you know? Show me. Show me, show me, show me. I would rather you show me than tell me. I'm a show me than tell me type of person when it comes to people. I'm not a guy, girl. He could just tell me. I'm like, okay, shoot, I got that faith that it's going to happen, baby. But with people... Uh, less this and more action okay let's continue psalm 78 36 and 37 but they deceived him with their mouths they lied to him with their tongues their hearts were insincere towards him and they were unfaithful to his covenant bring it on back i've said this okay probably at the very beginning okay is that this is a covenant it's a free gift, but it's a covenant with you, a quid pro quo, okay? You got to you gotta, you gotta be real with it. If you say, please forgive me of this sin, I, I'm sorry, I, I won't do it again. I don't mean keep doing it. And even if you said I wasn't going to do it again, doesn't mean you can keep doing it. Because he clearly says that if you keep and continue in sin, you're not going to heaven. Sin is not allowed. It's not allowed. And I'm going to jump off topic just for a second, just to make it make sense. Sometimes God will take people when they're in that, that, that window of blamelessness. It may not make sense to us. We may say, oh, they died too soon, or they were just on the right path or whatever. And they, and God, God, God knows God is, God is the best. Okay. He knows the before. He knows the after. He knows the in-between, the beginning from the end, okay? So a lot of times he will take you when you're in that blameless state, right before it goes downhill, because he knows. He wants you to make it, okay? So it is your duty to try to be in that that blameless um, 
as much as possible. Okay? Let's go on and continue. Last one. Second Thessalonians 2.11. For this reason, God sends them a strong delusion so that they will believe the lie. Come on back. I do not want you to believe this lie. It's a it's a it's a it's a sneaky blatant lie, okay? Sneaky blatant lie, in your face lie, playing in your face lie. Okay? One saved always saved. Is it true? Yes. God died on the sin, he gave you a gift, okay? You he, he's never gonna take that from you, but your choices, your actions, your disobedience can take you, shake you out of position. Your sin will send you to hell. God doesn't send you to hell, you send yourself to hell. You send yourself, okay? Your sin sends you. That's it, that's all. That's it, that's all. I hope I have been super clear, okay? I love you all. Questions, comments, drop them down below. Um, this was important. Once saved, always saved. Can you continue in sin after you say the sinner's prayer after you say that you believe and still go to heaven absolutely not i mean it's it's unbiblical there's too much scripture to say otherwise so with that being said god bless you and please 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 god says my people perish due to a lack of knowledge so last not lack pick up those bibles and study until next time bye